Okay, good morning. I call the March 14th, 2023 meeting of the DuPage County Board to order. I invite everyone to stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Member Evans, will you please lead the pledge? And I'll ask everyone to remain standing for the invocation. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I now invite Reverend Joseph Johnson of First Methodist Church in Elmhurst to lead us in the invocation. Let us pray. Governor of all, you have gifted us with governance for the ordering of society. We thank you for this gift. Bless and guide this government, elected, appointed, employed, and citizen. Finally, we know we are responsible and accountable to you for the social and political life we create. May this life be abundant for all, just for all, and merciful for all. Amen. Thank you. Mr. Deputy Clerk, please call the roll. Cahill. Here. Chaplain. Here. Childress. Yes. Covert. Here. Dessart. Here. Eckhoff. Here. Evans. Here. Galassi. Garcia. Here. Gustin. Here. Krajewski. Here. LaPlante. Here. Ozog. Rutledge. Here. Schwarzy. Here. Tornatori. Here. You. Here. And Zay. Here. Okay, I'd like to ask Lutz, Lucy Fletcher and Mary, Mary Keating, Gina Ahmed, and Lisa Hamilton to join me at the podium. Today is my pleasure to mark the anniversary of two DuPage County employees. We'll begin with Lucy Fletcher, who celebrates 35 years with the county. Lucy is a customer service assistant working with clients in the community services department. Development director Mary Keating and her staff are here to tell us a little bit more about Lucy's role and accomplishments. Well, thank you. Um, this is absolutely the longest serving employee that um, I've had the honor to recognize in front of the board. Um, Lucy has been with us for 35 years. She is, um, if you call the county, she is the voice of DuPage County. She answers our, um, the, the 6500 number. She also provides customer service for all of the walk-in clients um, that we serve in, in community services. She um, has the, uh, the responsibility of figuring out when someone calls the county of who exactly they should talk to. So um, it's, quite, uh, uh, it's quite a skill to sort of decipher what somebody's asking for and who the best person for them to, to speak with is. Um, Lucy is always kind and pleasant to our, um, our walk-in clients as well as the folks on the phone. Um, I think she's allergic to the microphone. She's very nervous. She told me she's just gonna stand here and smile. Um, but um, I, uh, so I don't know if I can coax her to say something, but um, I just wanna thank Lucy for her incredible dedication to the county. Um, and uh, maybe we'll get another 35 out of her. I don't know, right? Um, I'd like to ask Sarah Hun and Jen Boyer to come to the podium. Many of you have encountered our next anniversary recipient when you have questions about planting and other environmental com components of our landscape and projects here on the campus. Jen Boyer is an environmental project coordinator in stormwater management. She celebrates 25 years in DuPage County. As Director Sarah Hahn will tell you, her, her extensive knowledge comes in handy for a variety of projects involving facilities, 
DOT, and Public Works. Sarah, why don't you share a few words about Jen's great work? Hey, Chair. Uh, thank you. Recently, a joke was made that uh, seemingly sometimes in our department, we somewhat mirror Benjamin Buttons and the ages don't seem to work out with the amount of years in our department. Um, and so you may be wondering if the title was indeed correct in your agenda, um, and it is. Jen is celebrating her 25th year here at DuPage County. Jen started it out, yes, thank you. <laughs> Jen started out as a wetland intern while she was at college at Eastern Illinois University. And then she was hired on as a wetland sp specialist upon graduation. Uh, during her career with DuPage County, she's worked her way up through the department, learning all facets of both the regulatory and wetland program. Currently, Jen is Stormwater Management's Environmental Projects Coordinator where she's able to lend her expertise in environmental and regulatory fields to program management, environmental policy, and watershed planning. She's grown this position to not only support our department, but uh, also public works, transportation, and facilities. She's been integral in the campus planning, especially with the high demand needs of the ARPA program, and she's been assisting facilities in environmental planning and permit compliance with all of the work that they are doing. Jen has been a real asset to DuPage County over the last 25 years, and we're very fortunate that she's continued her career path in public service with the county. It's obvious that Jen is passionate about the environment, not only in her professional life, but also in her personal life. She's deeply involved in the Society of Wetland Scientists and is currently the secretary of the North Central Chapter. Jen also loves to botanize while kayaking on the lake behind her family's summer home in Michigan. And I love to hear about it when she, when she comes back. Jen, thank you for all of your hard work over these past 25 years. We really appreciate it and look forward to many more. Would you like to say something? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Conroy and um, Sarah. And to Jim Zay as well, who I believe has chaired Stormwater Committee for most of my career. And to you, the board, um, for supporting our stormwater projects. I get to work with so many great staff members and teams doing, doing what I'm doing with, as environmental project coordinator. And I can't mention them all today, but most of them are led by um, Sarah Hahn and Clayton Hepker, uh, Nick Hotmeyer, and Sean Reese, Joy Hins, and Chris Snyder, and Tim Harbaugh. Thank you for this recognition. I really enjoy working on all of your projects with all of your departments. Okay. When I was elected, chair, elected as chair of the county board, I stated my commitment to create more affordable, accessible housing options in DuPage. I am pleased that together we've set aside $2.5 million to seed our own housing initiative. As we know, housing affordability is an issue of paramount interest that impacts many of our residents, including first time and first generation home buyers who are priced out of the market, essential workers who drive long distance because they cannot find housing close to work and within their budget, seniors who need to downsize but want to stay in their community, and young adults who grew up in DuPage and want to raise families of their own here. We each may have a different idea of what so-called affordable housing looks like as we begin to address this important subject, I feel we must all share a common understanding of programs and initiatives that already exist before we begin to devise options for our county. 
Therefore, we will, we, with the help of Sam Tonator, a representative of the, of, on the Illinois Housing Development Authority, I've invited IHDA Executive Director Kristen Faust to present some of the housing initiatives available through her agency. She brings more than 30 years of affordable housing industry experience to the, to the authority. As the, chief, as the state's chief affordable housing official, Executive Direc Director Faust preside, provides leadership in state housing policy to advance IHDA's mission of financing and creation and preservation of affordable housing throughout Illinois. We are grateful she could join us today, and I think, oh, there he is. Sam, do you want to say a few words? A few weeks back when we uh, talked about affordable housing and set aside the two and a half million dollars, um, of course, I, I thought that it would be important to have someone come and talk to us generally, give us an idea of what affordable housing was about. And having been a board member at IDA for 10 years, I can think of no better person to be able to explain affordable housing in general terms than Kristen Faust, who's our executive director at IDA. I've worked with her for a while. Uh, no one knows more than she does about affordable housing, not only generally, but how IDA can also help us in whatever it is that we're looking forward to do here in DuPage County regarding affordable housing. And with Chair Conroy's uh, help, uh, we've moved forward and are going to be moving forward not only with the money that we've set aside, but hopefully some money uh, in the future as well. So with that, I'm very pleased that Kristen is, is here and Colleen Sinewicki, who is our executive assistant at Ida, who makes the best cakes and pies <laughs> when we have our meetings once a month. And she promised me she's going to have something very good for us on Friday. Um, but with that, I'm going to bring, uh, uh, I ask you to welcome Kristen Faust. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to, I might need this water, so I'll just put it on there. Thank you so much for that kind introduction, Chairman Conroy and, and Board Member Tornatori, and for the opportunity to be here with all of you today to talk about this very important topic, affordable housing, the need for it, and how to create more of it. Before I get into the heart of my presentation, I'd first like to spend a few minutes talking to you about IDA, the Illinois Housing Development Authority. And I'm doing this. Let's see how this works. Oh, I'm supposed to point it that way. Can we change the slide? There we go. Thank you. Um, so IDA is the state's housing finance agency. It was created by the state legislature over 50 years ago. We're self-supporting quasi-governmental, and our mission is the creation and preservation of affordable housing. And we do this by issuing bonds, that um, are based on our own strong credit rating, and we use the proceeds to finance uh, mortgage lending for home mortgage lending and down payment assistance for modest income first time home buyers, as well as providing mortgage financing for apartments with rents affordable to low and moderate income families. In addition, we oversee over 20 different state and federal programs that um, uh, have funds for affordable housing. So these additional soft funds, you may hear that term, the soft funds are the, usually the state, local, and federal funds that go into a project to make it happen. All of IDA's programs and priorities are overseen by a nine-member board of directors appointed by the governor, which, and we are fortunate to share a uh, board member um, with the DuPage County Board in Sam Tornatori, who serves as our board treasurer and finance committee chair. So you could say, that we are, um, could you do the next slide? Oh, look at that, I don't know who did it, me or them, but thank you. <laughs> um, you could say that we're a bank with a public mission, right? We provide a range of related processes to affordable housing, and um, for example, we do provide financial assistance to low and moderate income home buyers, including down payment assistance. We offer resources to developers who build or preserve affordable rental housing. 
We also fund housing counseling agencies and nonprofit um, uh, mediation services to prevent foreclosures, evictions, and displacement. We help local governments understand better their local housing needs. We provide some planning services. And we also provide oversight for the over 100,000 units of affordable housing that Ida has financed across the state of Illinois. Because when you get money from Ida, you are not just building a building for today, you're building it for tomorrow as well. And we have compliance and oversight requirements that last 30 years on our rental housing. So as a mission-driven lender, and as Chairman Conroy um, discussed, who do we serve? It's, it's the same populations, right? It's people who face obstacles with finding quality housing near employment and health care and community amenities. So um, we serve people from all walks of life, teachers, retail workers, families who don't um, have earn enough to afford housing near the school or work, senior citizens on fixed incomes that may be wanting to downsize but stay near friends and family, or those struggling with homelessness or a disability who may need additional supports to stay healthy and housed. Ida serves residents and communities who otherwise might not be served. And while clearly the people at the lowest end of the income scale need affordable housing the most, increasingly we are seeing housing stress move up the income ladder, right? Because rents are moving up faster than incomes and housing prices for for sale as well. So um, let's see if we can get it back. Great. Um, so, uh, and Ida has been doing this, and perhaps um, you know that we've been doing this right here in DuPage County, and perhaps you know you don't, because we try to be kind of seamless. Um, so here are some um, facts that I thought you might find interesting about what we've done the last five years in DuPage. So we have um, provided mortgage and down payment assistance for over 900, um, almost 900 first-time home buyers. Well, 900. 996 home buyers actually. Um, not, most of them were first time home buyers. And um, then we've helped over 7,000 homeowners in DuPage receive counseling services. That could be about buying a home for the first time, or also during the pandemic, it could be about preventing foreclosure, right? We um, worked really uh, closely with, with um, DuPage and Mary Keating and her staff with the ARPA funds for rental assistance and mortgage assistance. And together we've dispersed over $50 million helping keep um, over 5,000 DuPage renters and landlords um, current, right? So people can stay housed and also over 600 um, homeowners from preventing foreclosure. Um, we also have a program where we provide funds to local governments to do things like when you have a really um, abandoned house that's in very terrible shape, you really maybe need to tear it down, and that can be expensive. Um, we have a program where we've helped um, DuPage um, demolish or sometimes gut rehab of 12 abandoned properties over the last five years. And we also um, provide the planning services, as I've mentioned, we've helped eight different municipal governments in DuPage um, do some housing planning and chart demand so that you can better create a plan. Um, and then um, maybe what we're most known for, though, is that we've also helped you uh, create 862 new units of affordable rental housing in uh, DuPage. So um, in addition to telling you about Ida, my goals for today's presentation are also um, a little bit bigger than that. It's to talk about what affordable housing looks like and means. What do we mean when we say affordable housing? And also how local government can create a more welcoming environment for affordable housing. Um, because at the core, when we do the rental housing, we are really responding to developers who are willing to take on the challenge and the risk of developing the affordable housing. So when people um, hear, I wanted to start by sharing a few common terms. And some of you know all these terms, some of you know some, and maybe, maybe not but I wanted to create a level uh, playing field here, so to speak. Uh, so these are some terms that you'll hear used a lot by IDA staff, but also in general. Um, 
So let's start with affordable housing. And again, Chair Conroy mentioned this. People hear affordable housing, it conjures up a lot of different images, sometimes very positive, sometimes very negative. Well, um, here's what we see. We all want affordable housing. Whether we earn $30,000 a year or $300,000 a year, we all want a rent or a mortgage that we can afford. And the definition of affordability that's used pretty much across the whole country is that you're not spending more than 30% of your income on your rent or mortgage. And so in DuPage County, a household um, of three earning $75,000 a year can afford $1,875 a month for rent, right? But if you earn $28,000 a year, you can afford $700 for a rent. And $100,000 a year, maybe $2,500. So, um, that gives you a sense of the income and the definition of affordable housing. Another term we use a lot is, anyone heard LIHTC? Uh, Low Income Housing Tax Credit, L-I-H-T-C. We call it LIHTC. Um, LIHTC, most of the rental housing uh, created today uses this tool. It's a federal tool. It comes from the federal government. I'll talk more about it in a little minute, in a minute, but it is, the low income housing tax credit and it provides a tax credit to investors in it and in exchange that creates dollars to help fund the affordable housing. In Illinois, Ida gets the low income housing tax credits and we allocate them out once a year to the developers. How do we do that? We use something called the QAP. That's another word and phrase you, you will hear, uh, you might hear more about. Qualified allocation plan. That is the document, the policy document that Ida prepares once every two years that says when we fund affordable housing, this is what we're looking for. So it sets minimum standards around construction quality, around green standards, um, around who served and income levels. So QAP, you might want to um, keep that one in mind. And then if you, AMI, you probably all are familiar with AMI, but like we throw that little term around a lot in housing. And that's the area median income. And basically all the rent levels are determined um, by percent of area median income. And so um, mostly when we talk about affordable housing, we're mostly talking about serving people at 80% or less of median income. but. For LIHTC projects, it's 60%. So, um, and 60% um, in DuPage County for a family of three, based on the numbers I have, was $56,000 a year. So we're building housing in some cases for families of three, you know, that are earning up to $56,000 a year because it can be really hard to pay for rent, even with that kind of income. Um, and just the last uh, term that I'll just uh, share with you is PSH which is permanent supportive housing. And um, permanent supportive housing is, um, rent is rental housing that includes services because there's a targeted population in that um, a, a building. And so you wanna have the right services for the population. And this is an example of a project that we financed in Lombard uh, and it's 12 apartments. And uh, the folks in, living in this building are receiving services from Trinity. Um, a little bit more about tax credits and qualified allocation plan because that is, if you're going to build new or rehab rental housing, um, you're going to find that your developers are pretty much going to want to need and use the low income housing tax credit. It is um, the primary subsidy that we have. It basically um, is a scarce resource. We are oversubscribed three to one every year. It's not unusual for a project to have to come back the second, uh, for a second time and even sometimes a third try before they are awarded the tax credits and there's no guarantee. But that QAP, that document, it, the QAP, it lays out all the requirements and expectations that Ida has 
for awarding the tax credits. And so the developers, whether they be nonprofit or for-profit, they read and really learn that QAP, and they work really hard to score more points, because we have a point-driven system, and so deals with the highest um, scoring points are awarded. Um, we're working hard to try to gather more resources ourselves to do more um, of the tax credit deals. Um, the tax credits are awarded by population, by state, um, but we have been trying to garner more of the soft funds too, so that we can, instead of being oversubscribed three to one, maybe two to one, right? Uh, the applications for this year's round were due February 16th. Uh, the 2024 round for LIHTC um, will, those applications will probably uh, not be taken in until maybe like next January. Oops, I went too fast. I just want you to see. Okay, so here's another project uh, development, affordable housing development that we've done in DuPage. This is in Warrenville. Um, and this used low-income housing tax credits. And the last project, too, by the way, low -income this one used low-income housing tax credits and soft funds from DuPage, from, from Mary Community Services <laughs> Department. So we look to, um, these deals take a lot of money, and so we can't often do it just with IDA resources, right? We look for the local government also to um, contribute resources. So this is 71 income restricted units for independent seniors, and it was funded in 2020. So I just like to show people what affordable housing looks like because I think it um, kind of blows through some people's preconceived notions. Um, another key piece about uh, working with affordable housing is that it is, um, it, it does take a village basically to create one of these buildings. We call it lasagna financing because I don't know if any of you on the board are real estate developers or anybody in the audience, but normally if you're going to build a building, you go and you put your own money in and then you just get a loan from the bank and then together those two pieces create, you know, the money you need. And it doesn't work that way in affordable housing. You usually have to layer in multiple types of and pieces of financing. And so, um, and in addition, you're building something that needs to serve the needs of the community. So there's a lot of different voices that need to be listened to, as you all well know. Um, and so I just like to point out, in addition to the developer having their own team of architects and contractors and um, project managers, that also, in order to get affordable housing done, the, um, you also, the developer needs to work closely with, obviously, municipal and county government right, um, and they provide things like um, assisting in site identification and site control, um, zoning, and understanding and thinking about the quality of housing that's wanted. Um, local governments like DuPage are key financial partners as well, as I mentioned, because you're one of 16 jurisdictions in the state that gets uh, grant money for housing directly from the federal government, not just through IDA. So we take your money and the item money together often to get these projects done. And, um, uh, and we work closely with local jurisdictions um, like DuPage County. For example, there's some new funding that's coming down the path from HUD called Home ARPA. It's because it's ARPA related. And um, we've created a plan for our money and DuPage has created a plan for your money. And um, so together we'll work and make sure that the dollars get out the door in a way um, that really serves uh, local needs. State agencies are clearly important. So your developer are, is working with state government, obviously coming to us for tax credits and other types of soft funding. Um, and then there's the role of the private sector because sometimes banks are still also involved with the first mortgage um, and uh, also they sell those tax credits to syndicators, so they have to deal with the syndicator. So there's lots of different interests in this these types of projects. And then, of course, community-based organizations may be involved, and then the voice of the resident. But I, you know, what this is showing you is that in order to get one of those buildings built, it is harder to build affordable housing than it is to build market or luxury housing, right? You have to go through, there's more work involved. And so it doesn't mean that you say yes to everything the developer asks for, but there is a recognition that in some ways, 
we are all dependent on more affordable housing by how many developers there are, good quality developers that there are out there willing to take on the challenges and the risks and the satisfaction and rewards of building affordable housing in a community. So um, I just want to um, get towards the end of this presentation. And uh, this is, I think, a key slide here. So how can local government address the housing shortage? So you have a lot of different tools in your toolkit um, that uh, the developers are going to be interested in and that you've already used in the past, but may want to think about how to focus them on affordable housing. Because another thing a developer looks for is consistency. Like that you're not, they're not going to go and get plans done and get Ida to say yes to something and then at the right before the closing, the, you know, somebody throws in, oh, but what about this? You know, that everybody agrees to the concept um, basically more upfront and there aren't, you know, last minute changes. Um, sometimes those can't be prevented, but you, you want to try to not have those. So, um, so things that local government can do, for example, are make public land available to housing developers, right? Understanding and inventorying your public land and knowing what's there. And then thinking about how you do want to make that available. Do you do RFP? Do you, do you, does the staff and the, and the county envision the use and say, okay, we're looking for responses for people, for developers that want to build apartments on this site. And there has to be at least 50% of the apartments need to be affordable for people at 60% median income, something like that. Um, or whether you, you know, define it tightly or, or um, leave it more open. Another um, key power you have is perhaps increasing density ratios. Um, of course, those are always, they have, there's always a lot of community opinion about that. Um, but do you let, you know, a few more units be built on a site? Um, do you let an extra floor be built on a, in a building because they're doing it affordable? This obviously, you know, creates better economics for the developer. These are the kinds of trade-offs that you can do. Also around parking requirements and density issues. And you're seeing in highly dense communities like in the city of Chicago, even the idea of accessory dwelling units, you know, behind a house, that's increasing the density ratio too. So it's not just about apartment buildings. Um, you can look at, and this is always, um, this has been done for decades, it's always important, is reducing the cost of the infrastructure. That can be everything from the water connection fee that, you know, the, the project needs to pay um, to if there needs to be new roads or something like that built on the site. How does that, how is that cost shared, right, with the governmental entity and the private um, or nonprofit developer, but these are things you can look at to send signals that um, we welcome affordable housing because if your project meets this set of criteria around affordability, then we'll offer you this benefit, right? And um, property tax relief is, is um, there are some states where if you build a building that's all affordable housing, uh, they don't pay any property tax. That's not typically how it's done in Illinois. But, um, but there are plenty, there are programs in counties that do um, reduced property tax assessments because the buildings aren't typically earning as much money as a market rate apartment building. And lastly is um, creating specific plans and implementable goals for affordable housing to establish that roadmap for the developers so they understand, well, this is what we're, we want. You know, and so um, we're looking for more, you know, we want mixed income properties or we'll take a building that's all 100% affordable as long as it's built in a mixed income community. Or we want to make sure that there's always a playground in all of our family development. So you got to, you know, whatever your, cri whatever your criteria is, um, it's thinking about um, how you set that vision and then communicate it clearly so, because real estate development, it can take two, three, four, five years before the development actually manifests from the time the concept happens to the time it's built and closed. And so that's what I used to talk about, um, kind of the consistency of vision. So uh, I will conclude by just saying that this is our most recent project that is in um, the county. Uh, it's under construction. It's called Main Street Locks. And it's 24 apartments designed for uh, individuals with disabilities, people experiencing homelessness, and veterans who need ongoing services. So this property is considered permanent supportive housing, that PSH I talked about. Um, whereas the property I showed before for the seniors, um, not, you know, that's just kind of 
regular affordable rental housing. Um, so it's a challenging process even for experienced development teams, but Ida and our staff are also here to answer questions, provide guidance to the developer, to you, to our local government partner, and to see these developments from concept to completion. Um, we, you know, our, the communication lines are open. We're always so excited to see local governments who want and understand the need that we need to provide housing for all of our residents and that the private market, as much as we want it to work for everybody, it doesn't. And you have to do some special things if you want to keep rents affordable and keep people who are, you know, working in DuPage County living here too, right? And, um, so. Um, with that in mind, I just really want to say thank you for the opportunity to give this presentation to the board. It's um, really encouraging, and we look forward to working with you as decision makers as you move forward uh, to create a balanced mix of housing that serves the current and future needs of DuPage County residents. Thank you, Kristen. And I'm, I'm open for questions. I talk fast okay. sometimes. Questions. Okay, Member Kujewski. Thank you, and thank you for your presentation. I know. You you said on these deals, you have to layer in the, the money, but the biggest aspect of it is the low income tax credits. And it's basically allocated, you know, based on population to Illinois. Um, why do you think, you know, we're 12% we're here in DuPage of the overall population. You know, we've had very few tax credit deals in DuPage in the last five or six years. So I think the question is, why do you think we don't get our pro rata share uh, in DuPage County of the tax credits? And what can we do uh, in order to get our share of the tax credits basically our share being population like the federal government does that is okay that's a really interesting question so one way I'll answer it is by saying that when Ida allocates the tax credits we do have regional set asides we call it so that we make sure that like you know that all the resources don't go to Chicago um, or all the resources don't go downstate so we do have a Metro Chicago set aside that DuPage County is part of so right there, we've instituted something to try and create some fairness around the allocation of the resources. But I'd be happy, and we will, I'll go back and look and see if projects came forward that were denied or whether we're not seeing the deals. Because my sense is that you, you've seen several, we've actually financed nine projects over the last five years in DuPage. But did 20 come our way? I don't know. I can look at yeah, that. I'm but guessing. I really think it's more the signaling that you also want to do. You're going to need to like talk to developers, identify who you think the quality developers are, and say to them, we want you to do this. You know, Come take a look. Well, I so, think you're going to come back to the answer that it's the, the latter. It's the lack of submittals. And so I think, you know, what can yep. we do to do that? We need to drive it. And it sounds like the next submittal is January for the 2024 tax credits. So if we're going to try to help in making sure you get some submittals, I think we've got a lot of work to do in, in a short period of time. That's it. But I think you can do it because I bet you've got some good developers out there already. And then we can give you names of other ones that we think have done quality work if you're interested. And you could do outreach and, with the layering, and have those conversations. And with the layering uh, to make these deals work, I think that $2.5 that we've set aside can be the little bit of the push over the edge to make the development work if we can get the tax credit deal. It's a great incentive. And we one of the, me one of the things that we give points for in a deal is leveraging other resources. So the fact that you're bringing in other resources should, by definition, al um, allow the project to score higher. Is that great? Thank you. Other questions? Okay, Member Gustin. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, complicated, very, very complicated. Sat on the Naperville City Council for eight years uh, and dealt with affordable housing. We identified that under Ida and HUD calculations of affordable housing, what that number is, is kind of skewed because they do take into consideration the real estate taxes for each of the areas and they include it in that 30%. That's been difficult to get developers to come in and do affordable housing because the calculations on the monthly payments are gonna be a little skewed. And for Naperville, it's a lot of skewed because we have high real estate taxes due to the school systems. So there has been some customizing of that number to be able to get us to a more uh, 
affordable number for that different that community and every community is going to be different Ida and HUD do a regional calculation of what they believe affordable is which is a much bigger footprint uh, than any local uh, units of government um, at the city level we did do micro units which were very very po popular uh, and it was retrofitting a hotel uh, to do micro units. Unfortunately, this hotel had everything behind the concrete walls, so they did have to tear it down. But the intent was to do the micro units to get more affordability into the city. Uh, we have the IDD and the senior building that's just been approved on 100 and I think it's 107th and 59. Uh, that'll be senior citizens and those with um, disabilities. That one is going to be maybe a Gorman type of project where the builder, the developer is going to be able to do that with the tax credits. That's another thing. It's hard to get them to kind of commit to things because if the tax credit money isn't there and the dollars aren't there, they're not, they can't physically do it, especially with the cost of inflation, cost of product, cost of wood, <coughs> cost of roofing, cost of labor. All of that stuff has gone up. So it is really, really multifaceted and very complicated. However, I think there are kind of incentive programs that we can do for developers, maybe a, a fast track on development. Maybe, you know, we look at bulk, we look at setbacks, we look at different things like that. It is a long process, but at least I believe, you know, the chairwoman and others are willing to start that process um, and, and we need to do it. Um, we are seeing our seniors having to struggle right now even in their current home with the rate of the taxes going up. Um, so that's also an issue that affects affordability on new construction or uh, current uh, housing. We've got at least five to 6,000 seniors uh, that are going to loaves and fishes because they can't afford their taxes and they can't afford their utility bills because there's all these charges. So it's multifaceted it and I don't have a solution but I'm glad that we're moving forward to kind of have these conversations and dig through it to be able to get to some type of um, progress. Okay, Thank Member Ozog. Sorry. Thank you Madam Chair. Off the top of your head could you give me an idea of what the West Chicago or the Lombard project costs the total cost for the two that you showed today? So the um, so costs can run, okay, first of all, costs have increased 30% over the last three years for construction and labor. So we have just seen this inflation has hit uh, affordable housing as well, right? And so that's been, um, you know, it's disheartening in some ways because we had a little more money from ARPA, but then all that extra money basically just went to do the same number of units when we really were trying to do more units. And we are doing a little bit more, but not as much as we'd hoped. So some of these affordable units that I showed you are the pictures of, they range, um, uh, we, can, we talk about it sometimes like between $250,000 to $450,000 a, a unit is one way to look at it. So then if you multiplied that number by the number of units. Um, okay. So I don't know, I, it, it really depends on the building and the construction, but you could probably today maybe use 325 or 350. I, can, I will try to get a number for you um, to use as a rule of thumb, but there could be reasons, you know, if it's a rehab, my, why it might be less, or if it's a historic rehab, why it might be more <laughs> than that. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, but that's, those are kind of the numbers that we're looking at. What's, uh, do you know the size of the building in Lombard? I've driven by it frequently. The Is Lombard it, building was... 15, 20 units? I think it's 12. Was it? Hang 12, on one okay. second. Because the size of that one seems like it would be a good size for infill where you've got. Oh, yeah. So that's just 12, 12, 12 units. 12 okay. units. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's that permanent supportive housing, which is more focused on, you know, uh, populations that have special needs. So you have to have facility within their offices, whatever. Right. And, and we look at that, right? We can't, you know, it's always. <laughs> Like, like board member Gustin said, it's so challenging and hard. You're always trading off something. Uh, you know, you're trading off, yes, we would need more community space so people can meet and gather together versus, okay, that just added another $750,000 to the project. Who's right. going to pay for it? So it's that constant balancing act. Thank you so much for your presentation. Yeah, thank you. Member Chaplin. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, 
And I just wanted to mention that, uh, I don't know, last week or two weeks ago, we went out to visit this um, 1313 Larkin. And with regards to the financing, I think they said they had 13 layers of financing to complete that project. So 13 different, you know, when we go to get a mortgage, we go to one bank, but they had 13 different sources. So um, what I'm taking away from your talk on a positive note is, you know, plan and goals. So I think when the committee is formed, you know, really having plans, what, we, what we'd like to see, and goals, um, and, you know, to really work at this, because it's not going to be overnight. We're not going to be ground breaking ground in a year, maybe even two. Um, but I, I think it's really important what you said, you know, that we, we plan, we make goals, we reach out to the community, um, get community, you know, we have to have that community buy-in to do any of these projects. So it's going to be a lot of work, but I'm very excited. Um, where we're going. I'm, it's so great to see, you know, I know we've seen a lot in um, community development of what they've done, but it's nice to see um, the projects that you have brought forward and how beautiful the housing is, right? Something that we don't necessarily think of when we think about affordable housing. So, um, so those are my comments. Thank you. Thanks so much. Oh, Member Kajewski. One last question. I don't know if you're seeing, you know, and trying to get these done, um, a lot of municipalities or counties have a bunch of ARPA money or reserves. Are you seeing any of where the government's coming in, whether it's municipality or the county, and doing the offering the construction loan up front when it's being developed? So at a, like a 1% rate, you can do the construction loan, and then they get taken out once you get all the funding in place when it opens, and the municipality gets its money back or the county gets its money back. Therefore, you're making it much more incentivized for the developer because he doesn't have to get a 7% construction loan. Right. Um, and then the government, county, or municipality gets their money back after the construction 15 months because it's just the incentive of the construction loan. Have yeah. you seen any of that happen? In so I, it's, a really, it's, a, it's, it's a really good idea. I mean, it's a definite worthwhile idea. I have not seen it. Interest rates went up pretty fast. I don't think anybody, I don't know of anybody in Illinois that's done that, but I do know that in Maryland, there's a county that's doing that, that is offering, you know, the lower price here in for the construction. Indianapolis is looking at that so, same thing. Right, and so it's, you know, it's how much savings can you create by offering a 1% loan instead of a 7% loan? Um, and is that an, an, um, an encouragement for a developer to do, do that? Yeah, and so depending on how the deal is structured, I think that can be a benefit. Thank you. Absolutely. These I'm taking good ideas to, to take back to Ida, too, so this is great. This is great. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Thank you so much. Okay, as I said before, this topic touches several segments of our population. From the board's perspective, Housing affordability is also a topic that touches many aspects of county <coughs> departments and committees. The development committee makes decisions about zoning restrictions and building requirements that can impact construction costs. The community development commission and human service co services committee help guide the investment of funds that the county receives from HUD to support affordable housing. The Legislative Committee takes positions on state and federal policies that can provide resources for or create barriers to the construction of affordable housing. And the Finance Committee makes recommendations on investing the general fund dollars that the County Board has committed to this issue. Therefore, pursuant to the rules of the DuPage County Board, I am creating an ad hoc committee on housing solutions that will be a committee of the whole. I have asked members Chaplin and Tonator to co-chair this committee, and Mary Keating from Community Services and Paul Haas from Building and Zoning will coordinate staff support. I anticipate committee meetings will take place monthly on county board meeting days. We will work to find convenient times for as, for as many board members as possible to participate. Thank you to Liz and Sam for stepping forward to assist us all. And thank you to all of you in advance for your positive and enthusiastic engagement in this process. Later today, board members will receive a formal memo stating my creation of this ad hoc committee and some details regarding preliminary plans for the committee work. Our next presentation is a proclamation for Women's History Month. With the lead, uh, because our judges are tied up with the leave of the body, I'll ask that we move this proclamation item to a point later in the meeting. So moved. Or, okay. Thank you. 
Okay. Now we'll move on to public comment. Okay, on the matter of public comment, according to our county board rules, members of the public shall be afforded time to address the board. Individual remarks shall not exceed three minutes in length, nor shall the total time provided for all remarks exceed 30 minutes. Our first speaker is Daniel Dwyer. Thank you, Chair. My name's Dan Dwyer, I live in Medina. A resident of northern I don't Daniel I don't think your speakers on or your mics on there you go Do I just need to move it you hear me okay okay name's Dan Dwyer I live in Medina a resident northern DuPage for over 45 years um, this is my first board meeting which I think is testament to what a good job DuPage County does being proactive on behalf of residents and that has been true of the O'Hare issue, the modernization over really the last 18 years. So it was fairly surprising just recently with the release of the terminal area plan, which is more than just terminal development. There's operational changes as well. Uh, 6,277 households were identified that still require noise mitigation, which is more than they've done in the past 18 years to date. The surprising part is only two households in that document are mandated to be sound insulated, which goes against one of the key promises of OMP that in 2005, after O'Hare modernization was complete, they would create another noise contour, mitigate all the residents that had been missed, plus five years beyond that. And that's where most of those 6,277 residents fall. And yet the Chicago Department of Aviation and the FAA have taken the stand that this TAPA supersedes that mandate from 2005 and that that's no longer a requirement. And so I'm not quite sure where that leaves Northern DuPage residents. That was one of the key promises along with many other things, Western access, which we could talk about forever, I'm sure. Um, and as far as leadership on the issue, um, several communities in Northern DuPage, Bensonville, Wooddale, Itasca, Bloomingdale, as well as their school districts voted against the O'Hare noise compatibility resolution to um, adopt this contour. Um, unfortunately, they didn't have enough support to address those issues, so that resolution passed regardless. So I guess what I'm looking for is where do residents go for this leadership? They're not asking for more than what was promised, just exactly what was promised. You need the funding, which the city has acknowledged they don't have and they have yet to seek, and there has to be a timeline. Some of these residents, residents have been waiting 18 years. OMP's 10 years behind schedule. So I guess that's, Hopefully I've summarized the concern and I'll stick around to the end of the meeting if everyone wants to reach out with some ideas. I have more information, but I think my three minutes is probably running short at this point. Thank you. Okay, the board has received public comment via our online portal. Per board policy, these comments were provided to members yesterday so they could be reviewed and comments submitted electronically will be included in the minutes of this meeting. Now to the consent agenda. I seek a motion to approve the consent agenda items. So moved. Um, I actually uh, asked, sorry. Member you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I actually asked to pull item 7A um, from the minutes for the February 14, 2023 county board meeting from the consent agenda. Okay. Okay, I will take a motion then from um, item 7B through item 7H. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. On to 6B, 224-2023 pay list. 
six C two twenty eight twenty twenty three pay list seven I'm sorry seven seven D three three twenty twenty three pay list seven E three seven twenty twenty three pay list seven F three seven twenty twenty three auto debit pay list seven G county clerk's monthly receipts and disbursements report February 2023 7H change orders to various contracts as specified in the attached packet <clears throat> so move okay I will now take a motion on item 7a to approve February 14th 2023 DuPage County Board meeting minutes okay any discussion any discussion Remember yes, you. Is there a to discuss? Okay. So move. Second. Second. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. So um, actually, I move to amend the February 14, 2023, 20, uh, DuPage County Board Minutes to reflect that item 10A, which was DC 0008-23 development, um, failed. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion to amend? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? The, uh, the amendment carries. Can I get a roll call to approve the minutes as amended? Garcia. Justin. Kajewski. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Rutledge. Schwarzy. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. You. Aye. Zay. Aye. Cahill. Chaplin? Aye. Childress? Yes. Covert? Aye. Desart? Aye. Eckhoff? Evans? Aye. And Galassi? Okay, on to uh, member Michael Childress. Thank you, Madam Chair. I rise today uh, to present an appointment on your behalf. Today I'd like to appoint um, Walter Daniel Perez, MD, to the public member of the Board of Health. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Childress. Yes. Covert. Did you, Michael, did you make a motion? Did you? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, sh I should have moved. I moved that we appoint Dr. Uh, Walter Daniel Perez to the Board of Health. Okay. Roll call, please. Childress. Yes. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Eckhoff. Gar I'm sorry, Evans. Aye. Galassi. Garcia. Aye. Gustin. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Rutledge. Schwarzy. Schwarzy. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. You. Yes. Zay. Aye. Cahill. Aye. And Chaplin. Chaplin. Aye. Okay. And now to finance and member Liz Chaplin. Good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, I move approval on FIR 008823, acceptance and appropriation of the Home Investment Partnership Grant, American Rescue Plan Grant Agreement in um, the amount of $6,179,987. Okay, it has been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Chaplin. Aye. Childress. Yes. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Eckhoff. Evans. Aye. Galassi. Garcia. Aye. Justin. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. You. Aye. Zay. Aye. And Cahill. Aye. Okay. Member Chaplin. Uh, thank you. I move approval of FIR 008923, correction of a Scrivener's area and resolution FIR 007723. Leave. Leave is granted, Member Chaplain. Thank you. I move approval of FIR 009023, correction of a Scrivener's error and resolution FIR 002823. Leave. Leave. 
Leave is granted, Member Chaplain. Thank you, I'm approval of FIR 009123, approval of the amendment to resolution FIR 007523 for an amend amended grant agreement with Poised for Success for the use of ARPA funds. Second most favorable rule. Leave is granted, Member Chaplain. Thank you, I move approval of FIR 009223, budget transfers 314, 2023, various companies and accounting units. Leave is granted, Member Chaplain. Thank you. I move approval of FIR 009323, additional appropriation for the Adult Re Redeploy Illinois Program Grant Intergovernmental Agreement um, in the amount of 400 or from $354,223 to $409,453. Second most favorable rule. Leave is granted, Member Chaplain. Thank you. And finally, I move approval of uh, 231113. FIR 00919A22, amendment to the collective bargaining agreement between the County of DuPage and American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, ASME Council 31. Second most favorable rule. Leave is granted. Thank you, Member Chaplain. Thank you. And we will move on to the environmental report from Member Sheila Rutledge. Thank you, Chair Conroy. Um, just a quick comment this morning. Uh, the last meeting I commented about the temperature in the room and I had a couple of uh, well-meaning suggestions from other board members uh, that I could wear a sweater or open up the blinds to let the sunshine come in but I guess the point I was trying to make is that we were not using our resources in an environmentally um, friendly sort of a way so I'll do better about making my points going forward thank you Okay, um, we'll now move on to Human Services and Member Greg Schwarzy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, with regards to committee update, you all should have received an email yesterday uh, rescheduling the uh, DuPage Care Center renovation celebration, which was scheduled for the 21st. And it's really, you know, no main issue except that due to its occupancy, there's some permitting needs that still need to take place from the state. So uh, that will be rescheduled. You'll all be informed of the rescheduled date. Uh, and uh, with regards to uh, our items on the agenda today, I would like to make uh, a motion that we combine items 11A, 11B, 11C, and 11D. They're Second. all travel requests. It has been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. We're all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I move to approve item uh, 23, 1058, a travel request for weatherization assessor to attend the annual National Home Performance Conference hosted by the Building Performance Association and the Department of en Energy for Weatherization Agencies. Trainings to be held in Seattle, Washington from April 16, 23 through April 2023. 20, Expenses to include registration, transportation, lodging, and per diems in the approximate total of $3,590. Move to approve item 23-1059, a travel request for weatherization assessor to attend the annual National Home Performance Conference hosted by the Building Performance Association and the Department of Energy for weatherization agencies. Trainings to be held in Seattle, Washington from April 16, 23 through April 20, 23. Expenses to include registration, transportation, lodging, and per diems for the approximate total of $3,590. I move to approve item 23-1060, travel request for weatherization supervisor to an to attend the annual National Home Performance Conference hosted by the Building Performance Association and the Department of Energy for Weatherization Agencies. Trainings to be held in Seattle, Washington from April 16, 23 through April 20, 23. Expenses to include registration, transportation, lodging, miscellaneous expenses, and per diems for the approximate total of $3,700. And item 23-1061, a travel request for weatherization assessor to attend the weatherization quality control inspector training and take the BPI proficiency exam in Champaign, Illinois from April 24, 23 through April 27, 23. Expenses to include lodging miscellaneous expenses and per diems in the approximate total of $1,640.97. Second. Okay, it has been uh, moved and seconded. Uh, clerk, please take the roll. Schwarzy. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. You. Aye. Jose. Aye. Cheho. Chaplain. Aye. Childress. Yes. Covert. Aye. Desarc. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Evans. Aye. Galassi. Garcia. Aye. Gustin. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. 
LaPlante? Aye. Ozon? Aye. And Rutledge? Aye. Thank okay. Thank you, Member Schwarzy. On to Judicial and Public Safety and Member Lucy Evans. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would like to move on item JPSP004723, recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to Business IT Source Inc. for the renewal purchase of IBM Passport Advantage for the period April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2024 for a total contract amount of $94,818.06. It has been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Evans. Aye. Colossi. Garcia. Aye. Gustin. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Tornatore. Aye. You. Aye. Zay. Aye. Cahill. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Childress. Yes. Covert. Aye. Dessart. Aye. And Eckhoff. Aye. Okay, Member Evans. Sorry, I didn't, I forgot that I had the other, other three. Um, can I uh, move to use the omnibus method to combine items 12B, 12C, and 12D? So move. Okay. Any any object? Any? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I would like to move on item 231015. Authorization is requested for one crew member to bring the next generation prototype rapid communications vehicle to Champaign, Illinois to be displayed at the ILIAS uh, conference. Dates of travel are March 26, 2023 through March 27, 2023. ILIAS will provide lodging as well as mileage for the rapid COM4 vehicle. Uh, I'd like to also move on item 231016. Authorization is requested for one crew member to drive the second chase vehicle and follow behind the next generation prototype rapid communications vehicle to Champaign, Illinois, so that it can be displayed at the ILIAS conference. Dates of travel are March 26, 2023 through March 27, 2023. ILIAS will provide lodging as well as mileage for the rapid COM4 vehicle. Cost to DuPage County would be gas reimbursement in the amount of $30 for the second chase vehicle, as rapid COM4 only seats two persons. Second most favorable rule. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would also like to move on item 20. Hold, sorry. Hold on. Oh, okay. But I, I don't think I read the third one. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. Okay, so I would like to move on the final item 231017. Authorization is requested for one crew member to bring the next generation prototype rapid communications vehicle to Champaign, Illinois to be displayed at the ILIAS conference. Dates of travel are March 26, 2023 through March 27, 2023. ILIAS will provide lodging as well as mileage for the rapid COM4 vehicle. Second most favorable rule. We had somebody left the room. Do I need a motion? Second. Okay, roll call please. Evans. Aye. Colossi Garcia. Oh, Aye. Gustin. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Tornatore. Aye. You. Aye. Zay. Aye. Cahill. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Childress. Yes. Covert. Aye. Dessart. Aye. And Eckhoff. Okay, and on to legislative and member Don Dessart. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. By way of a legislative update, this is from our federal lobbyist, Bill Vining's group. Um, President Biden traveled to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania this week to unveil his budget proposal for the upcoming fiscal year. The president's $6.8 trillion budget calls for increased levels for both defense and non-defense discretionary spending over the previous fiscal year, as well as higher taxes on the rich to reduce the deficit. The proposal is a non-starter with Republicans who have said that they want to reduce federal spending, not increase it. Secondly, House Republicans also unveiled their plan to um, consider HR1, the Lower Energy Cost Act, which they say will reduce energy costs and remove barriers to energy production. It is expected to be on the House floor in the coming weeks. In state news, 
Illinois became one of only three states to require employers to offer paid time off for any reason, a measure that Governor J.B. Pritzker signed into law yesterday that will take effect on January 1st, 2024. Illinois employers must offer workers paid time off based on hours worked with no need to explain the reason for their absence as long as they provide notice in accordance with reasonable employer standards. Today, the legislative, the DuPage County Legislative Committee invites you to our meeting immediately after this one um, to discuss our 2023 state legislative priorities and which priorities are being considered in Springfield. We'll also welcome guest Joe McCoy, Executive Director of ISACO, the Illinois State Association of Counties. Joe will share with us an overview of the spring legislative session in Springfield. So, member um, Eckhoff, there will only be, we'll only be discussing 6,500 um, bills that are on the table. I'm just joking. We'll go through them fairly quickly. <laughs> but I invite you all to come and listen, come learn, and most importantly, come with your questions for Joe McCoy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move to item 5D now. Okay, this is the best darn lineup I've ever seen. Yeah. Okay, um, and member, member Chaplin, could you join us? Okay, March is National Women's History Month. We are fortunate in DuPage County to celebrate a long list of past and present female leaders. Of course, I'm honored to be elected the first woman to serve the DuPage County Board. I served with truly great female role models and colleagues in the General Assembly, and, be, and I believe we all strive to influence the next generation in a positive manner. As we join other counties in designated March as National Women's History Month, I'm joined by, proclam by proclamation sponsor, member Liz Chaplin, who has served on the board since 2012, and several women who serve as elected office holders judges, and department heads. We salute their work, and we are proud of the examples they are setting. I'll read a proclamation and then ask for the participants to say a few words. Whereas, women of every race, class, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of our nation in countless recorded and unrecorded ways, and whereas women have played and continue to play critical economic, cultural, and social roles in every sphere of, life, of the life of the nation by con con cons cons constituting a significant portion of the labor force working inside and outside of the home. And whereas throughout US history, women have played a unique role by providing most of the volunteer labor force of the nation. And whereas women were particularly important in the establishment of early charitable, philanthropic, and cultural institutions in our nation, and whereas women of every race, class, and ethnic background served as early leaders in the forefront of every major progressive social change movement, and whereas women have served our country courageously in the military, and whereas women have been leaders not only in securing their own rights of suffrage and equal opportunity, but also in the abolitionist movement, the emancipation movement, the industrial labor movement, the civil rights movement, and others, which create a, f a more fair and just society for all. And whereas in DuPage County and throughout the nation, a growing number of women hold positions of authority and leadership in business, 
government, and philanthropy, and their roles in the history of our communities and nation should be highlighted and valued. Now, therefore, be it reserved, re resolved that I, Deborah A. Conroy, chair of the DuPage County Board and members of the County Board do hereby resolve that March is designated National Women's History Month in DuPage County. And citizens are encouraged to observe this month with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. Motion? Second? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Enacted this 14th day of March, 2023, in Wheaton, Illinois. Congratulations. <laughs> This year more than ever, um, we have so much to celebrate. Today, I believe it's important to recognize the contributions of women who've um, made and contributed to the success of DuPage County. Women work in every department of the county. Oh, and all the county board women, come on up. Come on up, ladies. Be recognized. Um, everyone's appreciated. Um, our administrative assistants, I don't know if they're here, but we really appreciate the work they do. They're the backbone of the county, keeping everybody on track. Our health department, our care center, human resources, animal services, stormwater, community services, assistant supervisor of assessments, policy and program officer, chief communications officer, work net DuPage, um, chief information officer, and ETSB are all headed by women. That's something that we should really be proud of and celebrating. So these are all these women here. As, as our chair mentioned, um, women hold 12 of the 18 county board seats. Five of the nine countywide elected officials are women. And um, last year, history was made with the election of Deb Conroy, who was elected to serve as our first county chair, which she mentioned already. So, as you can see, women are making a difference in DuPage County. We always have been. Um, but there's one place that I was just really so surprised to learn. Um, talking with Chief Judge Popejoy about a month ago, he was telling me how more women, he's presided over the installation of more women judges in his two years than in the history of DuPage County. So I thought that was something definitely worth celebrating. So um, I'd like to have Chief Judge Popejoy come up and talk about the significance of the um, gain that women have made in the 18th Judicial Circus Court. So, Chief Judge Popejoy. Circuit Court. Circuit Court. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, do I stand out like a sore thumb up here, huh? <laughs> um, I am very honored as Chief Judge to be able to address you very briefly today, if I might, in regard to the special presentation of Women's History Month by the board. Good morning, Chair Conroy. Um, Chair, member Chaplin, thank you so much for the invitation to come here and all members of the board and all the other women that are here beyond some of my judges. Beyond that, thank you and congratulations to all of you. I am very honored to come before you today during Women's History Month to formally acknowledge the women of the judiciary of the 18th Circuit Court here in DuPage County. This month is truly one to acknowledge and reflect upon the struggles that women have faced in joining the legal profession as a whole, much less the judiciary. It is appropriate, I believe, to take a brief trip down memory lane in order to reflect on the journey that in DuPage County began in the 1940s when Eva R. Pollock was the very first woman to actively practice law in our county. By 1961, the number of women lawyers in DuPage County had swelled to two, <laughs> with the addition of Helen Munzert to the active list of attorneys, which then totaled 122 men, Eva and Helen. When I entered law school in the fall of 1973, there were three women students in my class of over 100. I became a lawyer in early, in early 1977, and at that time, there was only one woman judge on the bench in DuPage County, its very first, the Honorable Helen C. Kinney, a true pioneer among our profession, having also served as the first female assistant state's attorney 
in DuPage County. In 1980, Judge Kinney called a small number of women then practicing law in the county into her courtroom for a gathering and formed the DuPage Association of Women Lawyers, DAL, which today plays a vibrant and active role in the day-to-day -day association of all DuPage County attorneys. Those groundbreaking days of the past have shown how that beginning foundation has been built upon. The DuPage County Bar Association, the DCBA, has functioned since 1970, or, sorry, 1878. It only took 118 years for its membership to formally elect the first woman president in 1996, who's with us today, Linda Davenport. <laughs> and then its very second woman president in 1999. Yet, since 2011, seven of the last 12 presidents of the DuPage County Bar Association have been women. Today, 55% of all law school admittees are women. Truly, women are an integral part of our profession, from the bench to the bar. Women have assumed roles in all disciplines and areas of our practice, as evidenced especially by our own Suzanne Armstrong, who is the first woman to serve as this circuit's trial court administrator, who effectively runs the show over there. I address, <laughs> I answer to her. I have prepared, and it was handed out to each of you, uh, a handout reflecting the history of the women judiciary of the 18th Judicial Circuit. As you can see, slowly expanding from Judge Kinney's groundbreaking leadership, four more women judges joined our ranks in the 80s, four more in the 90s, and five more before 2010. But then, real change started to take over. From 2014 until today, the number of women have doubled to an additional 14 women ascending to the bench. We now have 16 women from DuPage County actively serving in judicial positions. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce some of those amazing women jurists who are able to take a break from their busy court calls today and join us for this special occasion. Appellate Justice Ann Jorgensen. <laughs> Appellate Justice and Pioneer Linda Davenport as we reference. <laughs> Circuit Court Judges, Bonnie Wheaton. <laughs> Circuit Court Judge Chantel Porter. <laughs> Our first black woman judge in the history of DuPage County also. <laughs> Circuit Court Judge Mia McPherson. Circuit Court Judge Jill Adi. <laughs> Circuit Court Judge Ann Celine Walsh. I got it. All over. <laughs> I, that's, the, that's the last person I'd want to mess with is Ann Celine Walsh. <laughs> Associate Judge Maureen Reardon. Associate Judge Christine Cody. And retired Judges Jane Mitten and Elizabeth Sexton. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. I'm very honored by it. Thank you.
Okay, well, what a privilege that certainly was for all of us. Um, so we're gonna move on to item 14, Public Works, and member Paula Garcia. Thank you, Chair Conroy. Uh, by way of committee update, I just wanna talk about the first item. Um, this is coming before the county board here for, I'm looking for a, hopefully a, a full vote on this, as this is something that's des definitely justified if you were to look at your decision memo on this. Um, we've got the campus utility tunnel, which houses the pipes that uh, provide heating and cooling to the campus buildings. So, and many of the pipe supports have failed and many more need to be repaired. So the unsupported sections of pipes could potentially fail, which will leave the campus without heat, domestic hot water, and potentially chilled water for campus air conditioning. So I just wanna make sure that we're all aware that this is really a must, must have on the first item. So with that, I move for approval of FMP 005123, recommendation for the approval of a contract Second. to Commercial Mechanical Inc to provide repairs and maintenance to the tunnel pipe supports for the county campus for facilities management for the period March 14, 2023 through November 30th, 2023 for a total contract not to exceed $58,000. It has been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Garcia. Aye. Gustin. Krajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Shorzy. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. You. Aye. Jose. Aye. Cahill. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Childress. Yes. Covert. Aye. Dessart. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Evans. Aye. Glossy. Aye. And Zay. Aye. Okay. Okay, Aye. Member Garcia. Thank you. I motion for approval for PWCO 00023 amendment to the original county contract of 5692000 issued to Fair Graham and Associates LLC to add verbiage to support loans from the IEPA Water Pollution Control Loan Program. Leave is granted. Member Garcia. I move for approval of PWCO 000323 amendment to the county contract 61630001 serve issued to Curry Motors Frankfurt Inc. For one dump body 2023 Ford F550 XL truck and two utility body 2023 Ford F350 XL trucks for public works and stormwater for a change order to increase the amount contracting the amount of $39,293. Roll roll. Leave is granted. Member Garcia. I move for approval of PWP 002723 recommendation for the approval of a contract to Dryden Equipment Inc. for four Filtomat M306 LP wastewater treatment plant, affluent water strainers to be installed at the Woodridge Green Valley treatment plant and no water wastewater treatment plant facilities for public works for the period of March 14, 2023 through November 30th, 2023. For a total contract, not to exceed $82,427. Second most favorable roll. Leave is granted, Member Garcia. I move for approval of PWP 002823, recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to Home Depot USA Inc. for miscellaneous maintenance, repair, and operation supplies for public work facilities on an as needed basis for the period of March 17, 2023 to November 30th, 2026, for a total contract not to exceed $135,000. Second most favorable roll. Leave is granted, Member Garcia. I move for approval of FMP 004823, recommendation for the approval of a contract to Mardum Construction Inc. to install an asphalt outdoor visitation recreational area for the 422 Child Advocacy Neutral Exchange Center for social distancing in the amount of $211,502 and to install accessible parking for persons with disability in front of the 421 JTK building in the amount of $73,750. For the period March 15, 2023 through November 30th, 2023 for a total contract amount not to exceed $285,257. Leave is granted, Member Garcia. I move for approval of FMP 004923, recommendation for the approval of a contract to Gerke Technology Group, Inc. to furnish and deliver water treatment chemicals as needed for campus facilities for facilities management for the period of March 23, 2023 through March 22nd, 2024 for a contract total not to exceed $90,000. He was granted. Thank you, Member Garcia. You're welcome. And on to stormwater and uh, Member Jim Zay. Good morning, Madam Chair. I move on SMP 33-23, recommendation Second. approval contract issued to AT&T Business to provide high-speed internet services for the county's flood control facilities. The amount not to exceed $86,765.10. 
It has been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Zay. Aye. Cahill. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Childress. Yes. Covert. Aye. Dessart. Aye. Peckoff. Aye. Evans. Aye. Galassi. Aye. Gustin. Krajewski. Aye. I'm sorry, Garcia. Aye. Aye. Then Gustin. Krajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Rozog. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. And you. Aye. Thank you, okay. Madam Chair. Thank you, Member Zay. And on to technology and Member Yena Yu. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I move on TE. CO 0006 Amendment to County Contract um, 3866 serve issued to Telcom Innovations Group for the procurement of hardware, software, software maintenance, and labor to replace the county phone system and to provide enhanced support and premium software assurance to increase the contract amount in the amount of $21,475.50 to add Second. software licensing and assurance in order to meet the increased headcount in the public defender and state's attorney's office, which results in a new contract total of $1,239,448.30. It has been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. You. Aye. Zay. Aye. Cahill. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Childress. Yes. Covert. Aye. Dessart. Aye. Eckhoff. Evans? Uh, aye. Galaski? Garcia? Aye. Gustin? Krajewski? Aye. LaPlante? Aye. Ozog? Aye. Rutledge? Aye. Schwarzy? Aye. And Tornatore? Aye. Okay. Member you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I now move on item TEP 005223, recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to Insight Public Sector for the purchase of laptops, desktops, monitors, and docking stations for information technology for the period of March 14, 2023 through March 14, 2024 for a contract total amount of 137650 Leave is granted. Thank you, Member Yu. Thank you. And now to transportation and Member Mary Ozog. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move for approval of DTR 005523, awarding resolution, uh, awarding resolution to A-LAMP Concrete Contractors Incorporated for the County Highway 3 Warrenville Road sidewalk improvement from I-88 to Illinois 53, Section 20 Sidewalk 05SW for an estimated county cost of $309,141 per low bid. It has been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Ozog. Yes. Rutledge. Schwartzy. Aye. Tornatore. Aye. You. Aye. Zay. Aye. Cahill. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Childress. Yes. Covert. Aye. Dessart. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Evans. Aye. Galassi. Garcia. Aye. Gustin. Krajewski. Aye. And LaPlante. Aye. Okay. Member Ozog. Thank you. I move for approval of DTR 005623, intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and the City of Chicago concerning installation and operation of certain navigational aid facility facilities supporting O'Hare International Airport, delegation of signatory authority Second. to the Director of Transportation. Uh, we, Member Zay. Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, we had public comment today, and I'm concerned about that, about the noise uh, of the northern half of the county. I was just wondering if we can have somebody look into this and maybe table mm -hmm. this until we get some information from the city of Chicago uh, on uh, the noise uh, patterns and with the change of the runways. And if they are going back on a 2005 agreement that was made, uh, maybe we could uh, get some information and then bring this back at the next meeting. I think, I think maybe we can clarify that for you, okay. Member Zay. Thank you. Thank you. Hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, um, the, the agreement you had before you um, is for the installation of runway lighting on property owned by DuPage County. It was transferred to us from the Illinois Tollway. So we've been working collaboratively with the CDA and the Village of Bensonville on this particular agreement. There's one hang up with regard to an easement from the Village of Bensonville that they are trying to work out between the two of them. Um, with this, I was in a meeting yesterday with the CDA leadership as well as the Village of Bensonville this lighting installation for this particular runway should help alleviate some of the, help better distribute some of the disproportionate number of flights that are in the southern airfield and move them to the north airfield. So by moving forward with this, this delegates the authority to me simply because the, the airport is already procured, procured. 
the lighting system and they're ready to install it on, on notice that the city of uh, the village of Bensonville's issues have been resolved. Okay. Well, first-hand knowledge of working with the city of Chicago from the Water Commission, they say one thing and do another, and this seems like another case of it. So if we could, please keep an eye on this and make sure and that we talk to this gentleman after and make sure his concerns are, are met and uh, we find out what's going on because, I mean, I got calls the other day. They said the noise through Bloomingdale the other day was absorbing it for some reason uh, out of nowhere that the flights were coming over low and, and loud. So. If we could find out what's going on, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, so after the public comment, I know John Lofer was here earlier, so he did go introduce himself uh, to Mr. Dwyer and, and promise to follow up with him. In addition, we will be updating the Transportation Committee on this latest information. We, too, are concerned and want to find out why the noise count tours have, has expanded, both west and east. Um, I know the result, so I don't want to hypothesize why that might be, so I think the CDA and our membership and participation on SOC and the uh, airport expert that we hire as a suburban O'Hare Commission should help to provide some of those answers and we'll bring that forward to the Transportation Committee and then obviously keeping every, all the board members, but notably Districts 1 and 6 advised. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any motion? So second? Yep. Okay, it has been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Ozark? Yes. Rutledge? Aye. Shorzy? Aye. Tornatory? You? Aye. Zay? Aye. Cahill? Aye. Chaplin? Aye. Childress? Yes. Covert? Aye. Tessart? Aye. Eckhoff? Aye. Evans? Aye. Galassi? Garcia? Aye. Gustin? Aye. Krajewski? Aye. And LaPlante? Aye. Okay, Member Ozog. Thank you. I move for approval of DTO 004823, Ordinance for a Highway Authority Benefits Agreement for County Highway 9, Lamont Road, Second. and County Highway 33, 75th Street. Leave is, leave is granted. Thank you, Member Ozog. Thank you. On to item number 17. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. 18. On to 18. Um, an old business. Or 19. I'm sorry. My agenda is misnumbered. <clears throat> okay. Old business. Anybody have anything under old business? Okay, new business? Okay, I'm informed. Thank you. I am informed when you, we do not have anything requiring us in executive session. Um, so I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. This meeting is adjourned until Tuesday, March 28th, 2023 at 10 a.m. <laughs>